And you are listening to Ask the Experts radio show. I'm John Wolf. I have with me Roger Wakefield of Texas Green Plumbing. His website, coincidentally, texasgreenplumbing.com. And his number is 972-442-4101, 972-442-4101. Our number here, 214-787-1190. And we're talking about all sorts of plumbing things. Now, Roger, we wanted to get into sink changing. Now, sometimes people might want to do it for cosmetic reasons. Maybe they've just redone, they're redoing their kitchen. And some people may have a problem. What do, you, what do you see? What do you advise about people who are thinking of changing their sinks? If they're doing a kitchen remodel, I really recommend they go ahead and change out the sink. I, j- I just changed out the sink and faucet in my house a couple of months ago and actually went to a larger, you know, we had a builder-grade stainless steel sink. And I love the stainless steel, but I didn't like that it was only, you know, six or eight inches deep. Didn't like the faucet that was with it. I bought a, a beautiful uh, American Standard it's almost like a commercial kitchen sink, faucet, or kitchen sink. And I had to, I'm just like everybody else. When it comes to things like that, I go to put it in. It won't fit because the cabinet, the hole on top was perfect. The cabinet below stuck in too far. So my guys are like, Roger, what do we do? We looked at it. We trimmed the cabinet a little bit, got it to fit in. That is probably one of the most Visible changes you can make in a kitchen other than appliances, your, your kitchen faucet, your kitchen sink, it, it really makes a big deal. It makes a difference. I get people call me and say, we want to change out our kitchen sink because it clogs up a lot. Well, cleaning the sink drain and the, how, to, how to clean the drain, you realize that has nothing to do with the sink. It's literally the the drain itself that stuff that's roughed in under your kitchen sink. You can put in just about any kitchen sink that there is. You may have to redo your piping, but it's not a hard change out. You take out the old one, you put in the new one, and you go back and hook it up. And these are things that most homeowners can do. Now, a bathroom sink, I'm used to pulling long hair from the females in the house out of. But what sort of things clog up the kitchen sink that causes a problem? The, t- the pipes below it, of course. The, the biggest things that we run into for a kitchen sink, rice, cabbage, pasta. We, we've almost all got garbage disposals. And that's another one that's easy to change out. But just because you've got a garbage disposal, whether you've got a new garbage disposal, an old one, it really doesn't matter. They... They're not made to just chew up every bit of food that is on your plate when dinner's over. I, my practice is empty your plate in the trash can, rinse it off, and any food particles, it'll help take that out. It's not made to throw a head of lettuce in. you got to think about this. The disposal grounds everything up and then feeds it out a little bitty pipe about an inch and a half in diameter. If what you're packing in there is something like rice or pasta or anything at all like that, cabbage and lettuce are are really horrible. And I just go back to these are things that I've pulled out, and it blew my mind how much of that built up. You've probably got two or three feet of pipe before it gets back to the wall, and I have literally had to take apart all that, and it's all just packed in there. Look at pasta, for instance. If you chopped it up in little bitty pieces, you could almost ball it up like a, like a snowball. And it builds up in that pipe and clogs it up, and there's not a lot you can do other than take it apart and clean it all out. But at least that's preferable to it being on the other side of the wall that you'd have to take part of your wall out. Well, But don't do it anyway. Well, and yeah. Luckily, we have m- equipment and machines that will go into the wall and clean that up, so, so you don't have to do that. Now, I would think the cabbage and the lettuce, I look at that and I go, this looks kind of stringy, like it would wrap around the blades. Is that what happens in there? No, it really doesn't wrap around the blades at all. The blades do everything they're supposed to do. They grind it up. It's when they put it into the pipe on the discharge up. side. That's where it starts clogging up. Okay. Now, if somebody's going to change a disposal, and that disposal's been there since they first moved into the house, do you recommend, hey, somebody knew what he was doing when he put that disposal in the first place, get that size, or what are the options somebody might look at? You can normally upgrade your disposal. 
I like going to stainless steel blades. They're going to last longer. The new disposals, I've got a disposal at home that is actually very quiet. I remember before my father passed away, I changed out a disposal for him at home. And one thing he wanted, and after doing research, of course, the disposal we got him changed direction each time it came up so it would not jam. And he loved it because his disposal jammed all the time. He lived in a house built in the 60s, and it was probably the original disposal. So it had put in its years, but he got tired of it jamming up all the time. You know, I space out sometimes. I don't think I'd want a really quiet one. I think I want to know that disposal's on when it's on. All of th- the number one thing, keep your hands away. Keep your hands away from the sink. Always. Have Always. there actually been many accidents with people forgetting and sticking their finger in there or something? Or probably not. L- luckily, as a plumber, we don't get those calls. Yeah, that's right. Uh, if, 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 you've stuck your, if you've stuck your hand in the disposal, don't call your plumber yeah. first. Please call 911. Oh. As the doctor. But if you want to call us later, I mean, and if you video it, I'd be interested in seeing it. Oh, oh, gruesome. What about the dishwasher? Now, I know I actually fixed the door on my dishwasher when it had gotten moisture in it and wasn't working right. And it was one of these 50-50. It's so much cheaper to do it myself rather than buy a new dishwasher. Or the repair, I knew it was going to cost more than half of that if I paid someone else to do it. And I was able to pull it off. But what I also did unwittingly was move the dishwasher and broke the broke the uh the, the things that had it locked in place, which I've never heard the end of, by the way. <laughs> but uh, what, what advice do you give for somebody trying to replace a dishwasher? Replacing a dishwasher, I don't work on dishwashers. I replace them. They're, I've got a company. I've got a couple of different companies in the, the Richardson, Garland area. Adam the Answer Man is great. Appliances Direct is, is by us in Richardson. And you can get parts to rebuild just about anything through these people. And Adam, the answer man, has helped me a lot on repairs around my house, wanting to repair an ice maker, a dishwasher, refrigerator, anything non-plumbing related. Changing out the dishwasher is really not that difficult. If you look under the front edge of it, there's a couple of screws. You take those screws out. You undo the cover on the bottom of the front of the dishwasher. There's normally screws on each side of it. So you take those screws out. You can look up under there. And normally, once you take those screws out on top, you can kind of take the door. Or if you can reach under and grab the unit itself, it should slide out. You've got a water connection and you've got a drain connection. Both those connections, if it's a relatively newer house, go through the wall under the kitchen sink and attach either the drain either attaches to your disposal or it's got a branch tailpiece. And the water line normally connects to a hot water valve under your sink. Okay, now if somebody is buying a new dishwasher, they're going to replace it. Any recommendations for what to look for I mean, other than where the silverware goes on the side or the front? Anything more technical than that that uh, you would suggest? I start looking for water smart. I want to get into high efficiency. If I'm going to spend money on a new dishwasher, I want that dishwasher to save me money. That's one of the most important things that I look for. Appliances. We're changing out, going to a a dark stainless or a black stainless now, and I like that. Find out what it is you like about a dishwasher. When you go look at it, look for those things. Do you want a tall glass rack? You know, the one that we put in for my father, we changed out his dishwasher when we did his disposal. And his top rack, he could change the elevation. He had tall glasses, he had short glasses, and believe it or not, he actually changed that elevation often. He bought a dishwasher that had that feature. Me, I would probably buy one that has more plate room for plates and things like that. It seems like I always fill up my bottom first and then my top. So I would look for something in the bottom that's maybe a little more organized, can help me get more plates, maybe even as the silverware up top. I I don't know if I've ever seen that silverware up top. I believe I have, but I'll have to go back and... Do some research now and check and see. Well, I got that adjustable one on the top, and at first I did change it all the time. I just had to open up the little covers in the front and slide it out. But I think after about six months, I just <laughs> you know never thought about it again. Just I'll just put that glass kind of on an angle; it'll be okay in there. Can absolutely. I ask an off-base question, Mr. Yeah, Rogers? Oh, Anthony absolutely. Again. Um, okay. Say, like I guess the wife or you know your better half has lost like a piece of jewelry down the drain is that something they can call you for and you can retrieve because i've heard in the past like if it goes down the drain it's not lost it could be in a trap of some sort 
if you open up either your kitchen sink now, if it goes down to disposal, you're 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 done. You know, if it's running, that's not good. If the disposal is not running, you can actually take your disposal apart. The drain that comes out of the disposal goes through what's called a P-trap. What the P-trap does, that helps keep the balance of atmospheric pressure to keep sewer gases from coming up into the house. So that P-trap is the, is the if you turn it up, the reason they call it a P-trap is the way it's shaped. If you stand it up on end, it looks like a letter P. So that holds water in it, and it keeps a water seal. Normally, rings earrings, anything that can fall down a drain will catch in there. The best thing to do is take like a, a pot or a big plastic bowl, slide up under it. Whether they're chrome or whether they're plastic, there's nuts on each end where you can take that apart. And when you take that apart, remember, like I told you, it's, it's holding water in it already. So when you take those apart, you're going to get that water out. It's going to start draining out the top. Now, when you undo the nut back in the wall and slide it out, Remember, that P is still going to be holding water in it. So that's what that bowl or whatever you used as far as so you can dump it in there. Chances are when you dump it in there, that piece of jewelry is going to fall in there. So they don't need to call you. They could actually do that themselves. That, that's a really easy – people can call me for anything. Okay. We, we are a full-service company. <laughs> Anytime I can teach people how to save money – and it's so funny because I actually got a couple of emails after the show last time or, or calls at the office – even messages on my Facebook page. Dude, are you trying to put us out of business? Why are you telling people how to fix their own plumbing? <laughs> you know what? If I've got an electrician that can teach me how to save money, man, that electrician is now my friend. Oh, yeah. So my deal is a lot of these things, and there's a lot of things that I try and tell people they'll call in, and I will try. One of the most important ones I remember, a guy called me because he had a clogged garbage disposal. Uh-huh. And he says, Roger, look, I, I want you to, to come over and change out my disposal. And he says, it's broke, it doesn't run, it doesn't spin anymore. And I asked him, I said, did you reset the button on the bottom? He says, yeah. He says, it's humming, but it's not working. Just come change it. And I told him, I said, you can unstop that if you listen to me and let me tell you how. And what I told him is go get your plunger, turn it upside down to where you stick the wood handle in it, and spin it around like a, a witch stirring a big pot of brew or something, and it'll unjam it, and then reach in there and pull what's out. Wow. He calls me back five minutes later, look, it's not working. I need a new one. Come change it. I told him, I said, look, I'm going to come unstop it, and I'm going to charge you, and here's the price. I said, but I'm going to be there less than five minutes. <laughs> Drove all the way to his house. Literally, I was there two minutes, unstopped it, pulled out a screw, showed it to him, and his words to me are, well, you're still going to charge me, aren't you? I said, yes, sir. I told you I was. <laughs> but I did. We, we talked probably 15, 20 minutes, me explaining over and over, look, you can do this. It's really easy to do. I've always used the thick Allen wrench on the bottom to sometimes fix things, and it's always shocked me when it worked, which was several times. And the thing on that is if it doesn't spin one direction, spin it another, whatever's jamming it up, that Allen screw on the bottom, those blades turn both directions, and that's a great tool to use for unstopping a disposal. And I find praying helps, too. Please, Jesus, help me with this. You know, it's, <laughs> it's funny. I, I used to be a massage therapist, and it doesn't matter whether I'm a massage therapist, a plumber, cosmetologist, whatever I'm doing, I always say a prayer before I get started, and, and it does. It helps. I really think so. <laughs> We're talking with Roger Wakefield on Ask the Experts radio show. Roger Wakefield of TexasGreenPlumbing.com, and we will be right back on Talk Radio 1190. 